there's only three things left to fix on my 2017 Volkswagen Golf R. The three things include getting the adaptive cruise control programmed finally, because this has been honestly one of the hardest things about the car rebuild so far. Now, number two is getting the car repainted because right now it's kind of mismatched. And number three is getting the car from a salvage title into a rebuilt title, officially making the car street legal and allowed to be driven on the roads. Now, in order to do that, that involves getting an appointment with the DMV, filling out a bunch of paperwork, and actually physically driving the car and getting it inspected at a special DMV place and passing, and if it does, then we'll be able to officially have this car on the road, and that's kind of the goal for the next couple of episodes. It's pretty crazy to think that this might be one of the last rebuild episodes for the Volkswagen Golf R. It's been quite the journey these past few months. In the last episode, we officially finished the interior of the Volkswagen, which included reassembling the entire trunk area, fixing a few bent plastic trims, and even putting the last few final touches in in place. And hopefully you guys remember this, but it was one of the first few episodes we did in the rebuild series where I had installed a used radar module that I bought off an Audi A3 with a matching part number because the one on the Volkswagen had fallen off at Copart. And ever since installing it, I've been getting a ton of fault codes, which can only be taken off at the dealer. And hopefully we can fix that today without going that expensive route. Now I'm not going to be repainting this car myself, I'll have a body shop do it. But for the time being, there are some things I do want to try to uh, accomplish in regards to the paint. As you guys can see, I do have a few door dings, which sucks, and these were here when I bought the car. The first one is right here, and then we do have another, which happened because of shipping, which I told you in another video, is also right here. So I want to try to remove these two dents by using a special PDR kit that I bought on Amazon. Now I'm obviously no PDR specialist or paintless debt removal specialist, but the whole point of this channel is to see how far I can get with doing things on my own. And as you guys can see here, I bought this Vivor paintless debt removal kit on Amazon, which I'll link down in the description. And the goal is that this will help me get those dents out and looking close to as OEM as possible. Obviously it's not gonna be perfect, but we'll see if anyone can do this. Now this kit was only 60 bucks on Amazon and as you can see, it comes with quite a lot of stuff. We have glue pull sticks that go into the glue gun here, which we can then use these special tabs here to place over the dent, pull the dent out and then push it back in flat, or at least that's the goal. We even have a tap down hammer, a rubber hammer, a, sl uh, a slide puller thing, I'm sure you guys will correct me. And then we have this, which will be cool to actually see the dents or the roughness in the metal, but it comes with quite a lot of stuff for 60 bucks. All right, so with the car outside, you can see kind of on an angle where the door ding is here, but it's still a bit difficult to see. So as far as I can understand, if I put this on it, we should be able to get a better view of the actual ding that's there. So with the board out on here, it makes it much easier to actually pinpoint where the den is. You can see the straight lines here, and then you can see the ripple. And I'm actually noticing another one right here. So it kind of tells you where you want to tap. This is obviously pushed in. This one's pushed up. So pushing this down, and we'll have to try to pull that out using some of these glue sticks and stuff and pull tabs. But it actually looks pretty cool for a $60 kit. As you can see, the kit comes with an assortment of tabs. I'm gonna be starting with this one, as I'm pretty sure you wanna start big and then work your way small. So this covers it fully, and then we'll go to a smaller one and we'll keep pulling out, and then we'll tap it back down and hopefully we won't have such a big dent like that. Well, I'll tell you what, I give you PDR guys a lot of credit. Now, I'm not sure if it's because I bought a cheap Amazon kit that came with weak glue, or maybe just the professionals use a much stronger adhesive, but this kit was kicking my butt. The kit itself is awesome and the tools all work as they should, but no matter how hard I tried, the deep ding on the door would just not pull out. Now I'm sure I'm gonna get roasted for doing this in the comments, or maybe some of you can actually offer me some advice because I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. All right, 
So after pulling this for a little bit, the dent is still there, unfortunately. And honestly, the reason I think it's still ever so slightly there is because of how this dent was hit. It was hit on such a corner that it's such a point, a fine point, it's not rounded on the inside, that honestly, the only real way to pull this dent out would be from the inside and pushing it in. So with that in mind, unfortunately, this is probably gonna be how I leave it, unless I wanna go take the door panel off or get a rod to shove down. But with this idea in mind of how to get the dent out, that's what we're gonna try doing on this one here. I'm actually gonna take this panel off that's underneath it, and we're gonna try to tap out from the inside, push this out smoother, and then maybe it'll look a bit better. But I do wanna make a point. It did definitely do its job. Like the kit works and that glue holds on really well, but because the only thing left literally here, and this is after putting some touch-up paint, is the ever so tiniest little speckle, as you guys can see if it focuses, it is the tiniest little dent, which is literally the only way to get that out would be from the inside of the door and pushing it with a push rod or a hammer if you take the door panel off, but it got a lot better. It is way smaller than how it was when, um, when I first had it, but definitely I think we're gonna be able to get this dent out way better than the other one. You can see this one is definitely bigger, but I think I know how to get this one out from the inside. any tools to get behind there and really push it and this is some strong freaking metal jeez it might have me beat seriously this is nuts like i can feel it but i can't get any good force on it like with the door you can take a hammer and whack it hopefully but with this i don't have enough leverage to push it i'm trying to use an extension to push it out it doesn't want to go at all like the only way i think is if you welded a uh the tip to it and pulled it that way, those little welding uh, hooks. That would probably be the only way, or you just body filler it, but geez. I am stumped. That's much harder to work than I thought, so I might have to just leave it how it is, or have the body shop fix it. I figured before I end up returning the kit back to Amazon, I might as well give it another shot. And instead of using the black glue sticks, I'd try to use the clear ones instead. And to my surprise, it actually made a massive difference. They actually stuck on much longer, but it was still to no avail. Maybe with a, a bigger, more shallow dent, these glue sticks PDR kit would actually do the trick. But in my case, the dent is just too deep. So I guess my last test is to use the smallest pull tab with the structural glue or the professional adhesive glue. And we're going to see, so far I got a lot more pulls on this than I have had with all of them. So, I mean, it's got to be doing something better. Well guys, I gave it my best and this is pretty much the best I can do with the tools that I have. And honestly, I don't think it did much at all. Unfortunately, I was really hoping that it would do what I thought it would do from watching other videos. Maybe this is just too strong of a metal. But um, yeah, this, this is just not the way to fix 
dense like this, unfortunately. But even though that didn't work, hopefully tomorrow when it comes time to remotely program or try to program out the component protection in the adaptive cruise control, hopefully we'll have better luck. All right guys, so it is finally time to code out the component protection system, the lock that's on the uh, adaptive cruise control on the front. Been on this car, it's like the last code on the car that needs to be fixed and a car is 100%. Now, unfortunately I can't do that. So I have to outsource this, which is awesome because there are services where you can do this remotely and all you need is like a Dell or non Mac computer. You need a cable and then all you need is a like trickle charger on the car and then you let them work their magic and it gets completely done. So that's what we're gonna do today. I just need to set up the car a little bit, plug this in, plug the uh, cable into the OBD port on the car. And then hopefully by the end of this, we'll have a car with no codes. Granted, I'll have to program, set up the sensor, but that's for another day. But let's, uh, let's set everything up. All right, so you need to use a special cable in order to actually communicate with the car. And I don't know the exact name of this, but if you would like to do this service, he actually sends this to you for only a deposit of 200 bucks. And then you send it back to him. And when he receives it, you actually get all your money back, which is cool. And this service only costs a hundred or so dollars. All right, so as you guys can see, the setup process is super easy to get this coded out. We have red to red, black to black. The reason we have that is for the trickle charger. It keeps the battery charged because you need to leave the car in accessory mode. Now, as you guys can see, you also need to run this cable. It's a special scan tool that's needed in order to connect that for the car to communicate with the computer that we have here. And then all you do is download TeamViewer and then you let them work their magic and they will code out the car and get rid of all those component protection codes. I'll tell you, it took me a week or two of researching if this was even possible. I was looking deep in the Volkswagen Audi forums to find someone with the skills capable of doing this remotely because the other option was either having someone come here, which really narrows my options to only local businesses or bringing it to the dealer, which is not only extremely expensive because they want to replace the entire module with a brand new one and then code and program it, but also near impossible because the car isn't street legal and I'd have to pay to get it towed back and forth. And luckily, so far doing this remotely is working out pretty well. All right, guys, so I just got the okay, which means he was able to successfully clear the car out, which it's just mind blowing how easy that was to do using this loaner tool here, which I now need to go ship back to him. But absolutely insane. I have the OBD 11 plugged in right now on my phone and I'm just making sure that all the codes are gone, which I think they are. I'm gonna clear everything and scan it again. But this is super exciting and it finally means that I'll be able to actually program the adaptive cruise control and not just be locked out of it completely, which is definitely a step in the right direction. So huge shout out to Justin for helping me do this. If you guys wanna get or have any sort of coding you need, component protection, whatever it is, or you just are curious about a service you might need, make sure to hit him up. I linked him down in the description below. I put his email. So make sure to send him an email ASAP if you have services, because I know a lot of you guys were asking me about it. And um, with that being said, let's see what uh, what codes we have left. Alrighty guys, so check this out. We still have some codes left, but it is no longer component protection lock, which is insane here. The only faults that we have is just the fact that this can't communicate with it because it needs to be reprogrammed, which is much, much, much easier than actually getting the component protection off. Database, error value received, database and plausible, no enable identification active, so on and so forth. I can figure that stuff out, but as you guys can tell, the codes are gone. The rest of these codes that are left, which is just a couple, can all be programmed off just by pro the last 20, can all come off by programming the adaptive cruise control. Check it out, we are officially done. Session is ended. And we are all finished and everything is good to go. All right, so we've made a bit of progress trying to code out the adaptive cruise control. It's a new day. This is attempt number two. Currently what I'm learning is we were able to get the component protection off of the uh, adaptive cruise control module, but now there's like a two step process in here, actually three component protection. Then there's something called FEC swap or FEC swap codes that need to be installed then you can actually program it. So we're on step two now, which we're gonna try to do today. Justin was, you know, uh, nice enough to send the cable out again so we can attempt this. 
and then hopefully we'll have some progress. Now, a lot of stuff has happened or is happening in this video. I was able to get the car officially roadworthy, road legal and registered, which is awesome. I actually wanna show that to you really quick, so come follow me. After doing all the paperwork and I made a new video, I'll make a separate video on how to actually get these cars registered here. Um, I wanna show you that this car is actually road legal. So in the state of Florida, what literally determines if a car is rebuilt, so from a salvage title to a rebuilt title, they put this little sticker right on that door that says rebuilt and that's it. I have a plate, I'm not gonna show you all the numbers, but you can see right there, I do have a plate on the car, which means we got a lot of progress on this car and I've actually been able to drive it for the first time ever. That's also why I wasn't able to get a video out last week um, because there's just so much going on. I haven't had time to edit, but lots of progress is being made. So I had a company reach out to me and they were you know, nice enough to send me this for free. I'm not sponsored, but they gave this to me for free to test out. This is the TV 6000 Pro topped on, as you can see here, it's a battery charger and tester which is really convenient because in order to code this car, you have to have the battery on a tender because we leave the car in accessory mode and it's running a lot of stuff. So I wanna review this, unbox it, and there's actually a mobile app too, which we can use to see everything on this car. It's just a cool way to you know, keep in check with your car instead of physically going over there. But as you can see, this is like legit. It's as legit as legit can get. Check this bad boy out. Top down 6,000, I'll show you how to plug everything in. But it comes with everything and it's real official. And I think, what is this? Uh, we'll figure out what this is. I think it's, oh yeah, this is a battery tender. So instead of constantly turning the car or unplugging it, you know, with these gator clips, which is like a temporary solution, you can unplug this here, put these on, and then you can actually hardwire this to your car and then every time you want to just take your car off, you just unplug it and you're good to go. And then you plug it back in and you could go about your business. But today we're going to use the gator clips and put this on the car. So let's get this sorted out. So I have it plugged in on the Florida regular outlet. You can see, obviously it's reading nothing, but we're going to plug this, put this on the car and get power to it while everything, while we start coding the car. You know, red on red, and you can see it's already starting to do its thing, 85% charge. We have 12, 12 volts small, and it will give us a reading soon in a second, but I wanna actually show you what's on the app. So what makes the TB6000 Pro stand out from the competition is the fact that it can connect to your phone via Bluetooth to intelligently manage battery charging and even battery testing. Now the time charging function allows you to automatically charge at low cost times, saving you money on electricity bills, and you can even set the voltage and current regulation with a 0.1 accuracy. Even better is you can monitor real-time power consumption and charged power, generating a pre and post report. So if you plan on coding your car like I am, or you just want to ensure that your battery doesn't die, then make sure to pick up the TB6000 Pro on Amazon with the link I left down in the description below. All right, so Justin said he's made some good progress actually coding the adaptive cruise control, figuring out that second step, and we might not even need to align it, but you know, I'm going to assume that's also necessary here, but he says he cleared almost all of the codes. And now that we, now we just need to go drive it and actually confirm that all the codes are gone. And we might actually for the first time ever have a working cruise control, which is pretty incredible. So let's take it on a quick test drive see if we got any codes left and we'll keep you guys posted. Alrighty guys, I have some incredible news. Justin was able to code out the remaining faults left on the car. There was about 20 or so, maybe 26 faults left. I officially have a faultless car. There are no faults left on the car and there are no lights left on the dash. So yet again, huge shout out to Justin for helping me fix this car and get rid of the remaining faults program the adaptive cruise control, troubleshoot it, as well as the uh, the blind spot modules too, which we figured out needed coding as well. So make sure to check him out down in the description below. I will leave his email there. Shoot him an email, let him know that I sent you so he knows you know where you're coming from and how you found him. And with that being said, let me show you the craziest thing. As you guys can see, there's only one fault remaining. And if anyone has Volkswagens or Audis, know 
that you'll literally only have one fault remaining. And as you can see, the only fault that is left is for multimedia, which is a fault literally just saying that you don't have Sirius XM, tuner for satellite radio. It is so silly. If you get satellite radio, this fault will go away. But the fact that we have no more faults on the car is absolutely insane. Now, here's the thing. Justin was able to take off the component protection that's on the adaptive cruise control, as well as we got a code for like no adaptation code, which is a little more complicated, but we were able to figure that out. The only thing left on the car in regards to adaptive cruise control is actually calibrating the module. Typically, when the module is disconnected from the car, even if it's the same one factory from your car, what happens is it kind of goes into sleep mode. It deactivates itself. So I believe using OBD-11, which I have now through my phone, I should be able to reactivate it and turn it on. And we're gonna try to do that now. Worst comes to worst, we'll have to bring it to some place and have them calibrate it. Best case scenario is that we actually can do it here at home by myself by taking it on the road or something like that. And I think we should be okay because I'm not retrofitting an adaptive cruise control. This car came with adaptive cruise control and the actual bracket where the adaptive cruise control sits on is totally fine. The only thing that happened during the accident was it plopped out. So I just plopped the new one back in. So there shouldn't really be maybe some minor adjusting, but everything should theoretically work as planned. But I wanna show you how to do it anyway. So from what I understand, if we go over to here, and then we go to, where is it? We're going down to adaptive cruise control. As you guys can see, there's a few different options. If we scroll all the way down, we get the option security access. And that's what we're gonna click first. So if we go to security access, it should pop up login codes, as you can see here. We're gonna click the first one and that should give us access to now being able to mess around a little bit with the adaptive cruise control. Now, what I believe the next step we need to do is click on basic settings right here, and it should load up. It will load up these options, reset personalization, reset triggering, calibration of adaptive cruise control, and release of the swap function. So obviously we're gonna go to calibration, and then you can see status not, at, not active, type of calibration static, and we also get the option of dynamic. We're gonna leave it on static and we're gonna to slide to start. All right, so update on the calibration. I tried doing a reset uh, static instead of dynamic and it didn't work the first time. And I read online that if you actually are four feet away from a wall, uh, 1.2 meters to be exact, and then you try it, it should work. And I did it and it actually reactivated the um, adaptive cruise control. And now we're at the second step which is getting a new code, which is adaptive cruise control sensor misaligned or misadjusted, which is a typical uh, response that I would get. But we've made it past the first step. Let me show you what I have. As you guys can see, that original code is gone. And now we have a new code, which is adaptive cruise control sensor misadjusted. So I'm gonna clear the code and see what we get. Well, OBD-11 doesn't work. I tried, it shows that you can reset the calibration if anybody happens to know how to do it via OBD-11, let me know, but it doesn't seem to work for this, which means I'm gonna either A, have to take it to like a Volkswagen specialist or B, take it to the dealer just for them to program the adaptive cruise control so that I can actually access it. But that doesn't change the fact that there's still no codes on the car which is still really cool. And on that note, I think I will be ending the video here. Uh, I'm gonna go drop the car off at a auto body shop, getting the car repainted, uh, just because, you know, they pull panels on and off and I don't wanna go get the, you know, the adaptive cruise control calibrated, then bring it to a body shop and then have to get it recalibrated again in case they touch it. So the next time you see the car, we should have a completely blue, fully repainted, Volkswagen Golf R. So with that being said, definitely make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Well, wanted to give you guys a quick update. Turns out I just don't know how to use adaptive cruise control and it actually works on the car. Check this out. As you guys can see, lane assist, blind spot, if I go down, where originally I had lane assist off and then every time that I was pressing set, 
it wouldn't work on the car. Turns out, I don't know how what I was doing actually. If I go back, I gotta figure this out because I like have no idea. All right, so this is what I kept getting every single time I would press like adaptive cruise control. It would keep saying, let's see if I could pull it up. I don't even know what I'm doing. I keep messing it up. Ah. Yeah, here we go. Adaptive cruise control and lane assist deactivated. That's what it kept saying. And I, for whatever reason, thought that that meant I needed to be programmed, as you can see. Well, it turns out all I need to do is press this and then press this and we have cruise control. And then I press set and we're good to go. It's that simple. Like if I press, if I start going fast and I press set, now I set it to 42 miles an hour with my foot off the gas, we're going. That's pretty nuts. Super easy too. And we're slowing down, so it's working perfectly. Now we're slowing down because of the car in front of us. Wow. So we did it correctly. So I can cancel this. Yep, and now I deactivated it. I just deactivated it just like that. I seriously cannot believe I just figured it out. Literally, this the adaptive cruise control has been programmed and is not misaligned at all. It's actually perfect. I just had no idea how to use the adaptive cruise control because it is entirely different than on my RS3. And it turns out it works fine and it's already programmed. Maybe I needed to calibrate it and maybe sliding it um, on the status when the garage door was closed four feet away was actually able to recalibrate it or turn it on. And now that it's on, we have no fall codes and the adaptive cruise control actually works, which is just so funny that I'm on my way to get it painted. I'm playing around with the adaptive cruise control buttons and we fixed it. So I'll be damned. Alrighty guys, so check it out. This is the last time you're gonna see the car. Whoa, unpainted, <laughs> fell in a hole. Unpainted as you can see, last time you'll see the bumper like this. And then the front, check it out. This will be the last time you'll see the car unpainted. It's so dirty, but this will be repainted. The hood will be repainted as well as the front bumper. So make sure to check it out in the next episode. Getting the work done from Alvin Auto Body. So it'll be really cool. And Sean's my ride. This is the other Sean. <laughs>